a few weeks ago, ZWO released a firmware update for the ASI Air. And one of the most exciting new features is the all sky polar alignment. Essentially, this is gonna allow you to do your polar alignment even if you can't see Polaris or the northern sky in general. This can be especially helpful if you're living near the equator where the north or the south celestial pole is pretty close to the horizon and you don't have a clear view of Polaris, for example. Or if you just wanna shoot from your front yard and your house is blocking your view of Polaris, whatever your situation is, this might really help you out. If you wanna give this new polar alignment method a try, you can start up your ASI Air, click on the I button, and then look for experimental features. As of January, 2022, this is where you'll find it. Once you click on experimental features, you should see it listed right here, all sky polar align. And then when you turn on the little switch, your polar alignment software has automatically been converted. And just as a side note, if you ever wanna get rid of it, you have to come back in here and turn off the switch. So we've already got that up and running. Now we can back out of this menu and then begin with our normal workflow. As always, our first step is to verify that our telescope is focused. And I like to use a Badnov mask to speed this process up. After I've attached my Badnov mask to the front of the telescope, I can take a three or five second long photo. I'll see the diffraction spikes, and then I can adjust my focusing ring until that central spike is right in the middle. If your stars are looking good, you can take off the Batnov mask. And now we're ready to do our polar alignment steps. But I want to be very clear here. Even though we're doing the new all sky polar alignment, the mount itself still needs to be pointed up north, ideally towards where Polaris should be. Even though you might not be able to see it, you want to just kind of guess and make sure the mount's aimed up to that general location. That'll make these next steps easier. Assuming your mount is aimed up north, roughly where Polaris would be if you could see it, then you can come in here into the PA menu and it tells you right there, point the scope at the visible sky except east or west. To me, that just means point the scope north or south realistically. For our example today, we're assuming we can't see north, maybe there's a house in the way, so we're gonna aim our telescope towards the south. The mount is still facing north, but we can turn the telescope towards the south. Then once we've aimed up in that general direction, we hit the play button and it's gonna go through and take a photo. In this case, I wanted to manually slew my telescope around using the keys here in the ASI Air. And I kind of cut part of that out, but you can see I'm tapping the keys there. And then I take a test photo to make sure my stars are sharp and I've got a nice view of the southern sky. Alternatively, you can use the go to function here in the ASI Air and aim up towards Orion. That's what I did last night. So now that I've got my camera aimed up towards Orion in the southern sky, I'll change back to the polar alignment window and I can actually go through my steps even though the camera is pointed at the Orion Nebula. After we hit the play button, the camera will begin taking its first image. Once this completes, it will plate solve. In other words, it just looks at the stars and figures out where it's pointing. In this case, it was able to plate solve. Now it's gonna rotate the RA axis a few degrees and then stop. It will take another photo and plate solve again. It will repeat this same step one last time. Then when it has these three images, it compares how the stars have rotated and using these calculations, it's able to tell you how far off your polar alignment is. It is really a remarkable achievement. So kudos to ZWO for another really cool feature in the ASI Air. As you might have noticed in the video, my ASI Air Plus almost got pulled over because my cables are pretty short and the camera rotated further than I thought it would. So I just wanted to caution you that if you're gonna be trying this, make sure you have enough clearance room, you're not gonna bang in anything with the camera, and also that all your cables are plenty long enough that we don't have an accident out there at night. Once this completes, we'll be ready to go through, and the process is gonna be the same as it would be if our camera was pointed up towards Polaris. It's gonna tell us how to adjust our base by turning our altitude and azimuth screws until our alignment is as close to perfect as possible. When we click on let's go, we can now see our total error, in this case, 10 minutes, 15 seconds. In your case though, if you're not able to see Polaris, then don't be afraid if your total error here is like 10 degrees or something like that, that would be perfectly acceptable. And you'll just have to go through on your base and turn your altitude and azimuth screws and get that total error as low as possible. Now I wanna show you the discrepancy between the all sky polar alignment and just your standard polar alignment we're gonna see how far off the two values are, which will give us an idea of how accurate this new beta feature really is. 
After you click on the go to home position button here, it will automatically slew your mount and your telescope back up towards Polaris or where it should be. And in this case, because I do have a clear view to Polaris, I'll take a photo. We should see it here on the preview screen. And then we're gonna go through the polar alignment process again, this time just using the standard default option. We need to remember to go back into our I menu though, and then go to the experimental features and turn off the all sky polar alignment. Otherwise it's gonna get kind of stuck in this menu. So I'll click on the eye, go to the experimental features, turn off that switch, and we're immediately ready to go. We're doing our polar alignment as normal. All right, and here we can see that the value it's giving us for the total error is two minutes, 33 seconds for my traditional polar alignment. If we compare that to the all sky polar alignment, that was telling us we had an error of 10 minutes, 15 seconds. In other words, based on these tests, the all sky polar alignment isn't as accurate as the traditional polar alignment. It's about eight arc minutes of discrepancy. But in reality, that's not a big deal, especially considering how revolutionary this new technique can be for certain people. So with that said, the new all sky polar alignment does a great job. It probably could use a little tweaking just to get a little bit more in line with the traditional polar alignment. But overall, this is a great new addition to the ASI Air. And for those of you that have trouble seeing Polaris or the Northern Sky, you might want to give this a try. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.